Welcome to Gary Clark Tech and this is part two in our PDO tutorial. Before we get into it, let me just say that I record in high resolution, so no need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. Now that we have our connection in place, let's now have a look at running some queries getting some data back from the database and putting some data into the database. The class or the object which does most of the work for us is a PDO statement. So when I do PDO query here, I call the query method on PDO, I will get back a PDO statement. And it's with that that we can actually execute the SQL that we are passing in to this query method. So let's have a quick look at this. As you can see there, it returns PDO statement. I'm starting with a query which is about as basic as it will get. So I'm just selecting name from users and I can fetch the records one row at a time. I've only actually got one row in my database, but ignore that for now. So the way I'm going to do it is while row equals and then I'm calling the fetch method on statement and that will fetch me back a row. All I'm going to do is echo it out. For this exercise, I'm not going to start up a server or anything. I'm just going to run all of this in the console by executing php connection. So php connection.php and there's my result. Gary Clark is the one name that it's brought back from the database. Okay, one of the main advantages of using PDO, apart from its obvious object-oriented uh, properties qualities, is the fact that you can use prepared statements and you can bind parameters to those statements. So if you're expecting user submitted data, you need to protect yourself against SQL injection and you can do that by using placeholders and then binding parameters to those placeholders. Exactly like the PDO query method, the PDO prepare method also gives me back a PDO statement. So let's now create the variables that we're gonna to use to insert into this query. Email, I'll use gary at example.com and then name Gary Clark. So they're the records which are in the database, so they're the values which are in the database. I'm going to execute the query by calling the execute method on statement and I pass in an array and that array will contain my variables in the same order as what they must appear in the query. So email first and then name because I've said where email equals and then and name equals. And then same again, I'm just gonna do statement fetch. So as you can see, statement is what all the methods are called off of. And we use question marks as our placeholders. We call them positional placeholders when we do it like this. I'm gonna use my old favorite um, Symphony VAR dumper in order to inspect the results of these queries because it just uh, makes it much easier to read than if you use VAR dump or print. So I'll require once from my vendor folder the autoload PHP file and then I'm just going to dump out the user using DD which stands for die and dump uh, PHP connection and so there you go I get an associative array of my user class. Now if I comment out um, fetch a sock as you can see I get duplicate fields, which as you can see are indexed by both field name and also by numbers. That's because the default is this, PDO fetch both. But no one ever uses that. So I'm gonna return it to how it was and we'll keep it as this, which is the most common usage, I think. Now let me show you another way of using placeholders. And this time we're gonna use named placeholders. I much prefer this, it's more explicit, it's more clear, and it means I don't have to put everything in the right order or in a, in a strict order. So when I call execute this time, I also have to pass the key with the value. But as you can see, when I run it, you get exactly the same result. So you're doing the same thing, but in a different way. That's a couple of selects taken care of. Let's now insert some extra records into the database. And I'm going to do it in pretty much the same way, except it's going to be an insert query instead of a select. But I'll use named placeholders again. So insert into users, 
name, email, and then the values. And then here are these placeholders, name, and then email. I'll go ahead and set those variables. So I'll just make up some names, Jane Doe, and I'll have an email of Jane Doe at example.com. Exactly the same thing to execute it. I just use my keys and values. Can you see how easy this stuff is? You're basically doing the same thing, but with slightly different queries or with different queries each time. As I'm inserting a row, I'm not expecting a result back, but I can see how many rows have been affected. And you do that with statement row count. And so I'm trying to insert one record, so I should get back a row count of one. Over to the terminal, run that, and we have a row count of one, perfect. Okay, let's now update a record in the database. So, this time I'm going to write out my SQL before I pass it into the method. So update users set email equals colon email where ID equals colon ID. So always remember the colon when you're doing named placeholders. If you're not actually interested in getting a row count, you can just chain your methods together like this, prepare SQL and then chain execute onto the end of that and this will run exactly the same, you're just not trying to get the row count back. I'll just comment this line out so I'm not inserting or trying to insert a duplicate record and we'll go and run that. So I refresh and as you can see the email for the first record has changed. I actually intended it for the second record but never mind. Let me now show you another way of getting rows back out of a statement. We can actually do it using a for each loop because the PDO statement class implements an interface called traversable, which is something that we're going to cover later on in the course. But basically it makes it possible for us to loop over objects like our statement object as if it was an array. And then we can just take each row and echo out each row at a time or echo out values from each row at a time like we're doing here and it'll work exactly like it did in my first example except this time i've got that extra row which i just inserted so I run it again and we have gary clark and jane doe something you may have noticed that is that even though i'm only selecting name from users i still have to select the name key from an array which I shouldn't really have to do that if I'm only after one single value and where I'm only querying the database for one record like I do when I say where ID is whatever. The way I do this is very similar to the way I've done my other queries. So first let's have a look at doing it that way and we'll see what kind of result we get. So uh, same thing, statement execute and then statement fetch. And I'm just going to dump out the result of that which will be my user. As you can see, I get an array, but I only wanted the name, so it seems a bit overkill for it to return an array where I have to call um, the name key on that array in order to get the value that I was after. So there is a remedy for this, and that is to use fetch column. So all I have to do is change this to fetch column. And then I don't need to grab the name key off of user. I can just dump out user. Let's run this again. And there you go. So it's just giving me back the single column value which I wanted, which is a best way of doing it in this situation. It's also useful for things like these. Uh, counts, aggregate queries where you want to count something or sometimes where you want to sum something. You're just expecting a single value back. You want the number of users in the table. In that case, I can also um, chain on the fetch column method. And when I run it again, it gives me back my count. Notice it was encased in quotes there, it came back as a string. The final thing I'm gonna show you in this recording is pretty cool. We're gonna take our records that we retrieve from the database and we're gonna use those to create 
objects. So what I'm doing is creating a user class. You'll notice that all of these properties are identical to the fields in my users table. And so I'm going to query the database for all of the users. And this time I'm going to chain on a different method. This one is called fetch all and it's really useful for when you're fetching multiple records rather than single records. First argument is the fetch mode. So you'll notice I've changed it to PDO fetch class. The second argument is the name of the class as a string which I want to populate. So we'll dump out the users. There's one other thing I need to do. I need to import my user class at the top. And so the final thing for me to do is to go and test this out. And there we go. So we have an array with two items and both of those items are instances of the user class. And that completes our introduction on how to use PDO. This recording is actually a preview from my complete object-oriented PHP developer course. If you want to know more about that, then check out the link which is in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed it, hope it's been useful. Give it a thumbs up if so, and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. One other thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new recordings every week and details of my upcoming schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage.